Okay. The BBY had to land in that or take me back to where they were going. Either one, they decided that they, I guess the situation more I think about, they, they were to get back to the task force and try to get us. I had two other guys on there besides me that they'd picked up to get us back. We didn't want to go where they were going because it took a long time to get back to the fleet then. Or I know I remember that they, to take the task force, they decided to do that and then they didn't have enough gas to get back where they were going. So they landed at the task force. The task force don't, don't put on any lights normally, but when the PVY was coming in, they put on searchlights out on the water and they lit up all the water out there. It was real dark and he landed in there and, and pretty bad wreck the PVY landing. And uh, so they sent a ship's boat out to get us and they got us and all the PVY crew and left the PVY out there in the water. And I guess I remember, I don't know whether I heard it or knew or read about it or something, but they, some of the destroyers sunk at the PVY, so it would be floating around. Oh, they took off the whole crew off because they probably didn't have enough fuel to go back. But They didn't have enough fuel to get back to their home base wherever it was. I don't but They could have refueled them anyway. Oh, well. No, you can't, you know, you can't refuel in that kind of weather, yeah. that kind of water. It was, it was, it was, it wasn't a, well, it was a, the fuel was one thing, but the other thing was the swells were swells, so big. Yeah, yeah. They were like 500 feet from the top of the swell to the bottom, and, and it was, I guess it was virtually impossible to land smoothly and safely and be in good shape, but the PBY wasn't in very good shape after we landed. Yeah. I don't remember what broke, but, but they were all, they were banned in the plane right then. Huh. Get out of here. So the, uh, were there other um, rescuees on board, or were you the only one? And say that again. Were there other pilots on board? Yeah, there three of us. There were me and two others. They picked okay. up out there in my rounds, but it had been a long way. They'd already had both of them on board when they came to get me. Mm. I don't know where they got them. Whether mm. it was close or far off, or the same strike or some other strike. Maybe they yeah. had them on board for a day. I don't know. Huh. I bet your guys. Uh, I bet Malcolm was. System. Malcolm was pretty happy to see you, huh? I don't remember, but I, I bet so. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't remember anything about that. He, he, everybody's busy with their own thing. You had time to say hello, but you didn't have time to, to worry about stuff. You know, you just did what you had to do and stay busy. So the other time, it's the same thing. You're doing uh, ground fire. You get your engine shot out. You uh, ditch the plane. This time you're in your raft floating around for a day and a half or almost two days maybe and wondering if you're going to get picked up and all of a sudden what, you see a periscope or something? I, I, don't, I don't think I saw a periscope first. I think I just saw, maybe I was looking around and, and there it was, huh. submarine conning tower come up first. And yeah. You can hear that of course, it come making a lot of noise and it comes in the water come right out of the water and there it was. And that, that wasn't like a PBY. I didn't know what kind of sub it was when I first saw it, but so it took a minute to decide it was a U.S. sub, which was very good relief. It, it was the first thought was it wasn't a, it, was, it would have been a Jap sub. Mm -hmm. And that didn't sell well at all. Yeah. But uh, it turned out to be U.S. So it was, I remember an excessively pleasant feeling of relief that it was. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the sub name? Yeah. No, I don't. And so they, what did they put a dinghy out to go pick you up or something, or did you? Yeah, they did. Yeah, again, they don't get the boat too close to the person in the water because yeah. the, the, if the wave action is such that it can yeah. run up the side of the ship, splash down, can yeah. submerge the swimmer. So they try to separate a little bit there. So uh, that was a, a pretty, pretty uh, rewarding experience to to get rescued, I can tell you that. What happened when you got on the sub? I don't remember any details except my feelings, and that was nothing at first except relief, but it didn't take but, but about time for that thing to sink, close the hatches and sink, that I began to think about something else, <laughs> being underwater, which I'd never <laughs> been before. And it was, it was quite a, a feeling to be realize you're in a submarine of course, you, you rationalize very quickly. Well, it got here as a submarine. It'll go away. It'll be all right. But you go through kind of a yeah. uh, feeling there. I'm sure everybody that goes down a sub goes through that feeling that 
wonder if it's going to work, and it does, so they're yeah. okay. I'll have to tell you about the time I went down in the sub for one day, but that's neither here nor there, but I can, I can relate to what you're thinking. It's a very small place, and the diesel fumes are in the air burning your eyes, and it's just, I don't know how those guys can take it. So, um, so where did they take you then, when they got you? Some uh, fort? Or did they take you clear back to the task force? They came back to the task force and just uh, submerged and the, the carrier sent a, a whale boat out and picked me up. Got back to the, right direct to the carrier. Hmm. And the sub, I'm trying to think, the sub didn't have anybody else but me. I was the only one on it. And so the next day you were on a mission or did they give you a little R&R &R time? I don't think they gave anything, but the, it certainly wasn't the next day. Yeah. Missions were very spread out. I guess I was on the Yorktown eight or nine months, whatever it was, and, and didn't fly but about, I don't know, I think I flew 50 hours in that whole time. Hmm. There weren't very many flights. I didn't get on all of them as that night fire unit. I only got to go on the ones that, that were needed to my radar, mm -hmm. and uh, so and the, and the Bonham Richard had all the night fighters. So when there were night missions coming up, they always did it all, and the night fighter unit didn't get any because we were day fighter attached, and yet we couldn't go with the day fighters either. So we were kind of in between. I don't know how to describe all that, mm -hmm. but it, you know we got some flying, but it wasn't the other day fighters would fly more often. Right. Well, good. That's, that's a good story and a good wrap-up for the war years.